My name is Seth Swirsky. I have loved the Beatles ever since I was a small boy growing up on Long Island in the 60s. So it's not surprising that over the years, when I met someone who told me they had a personal story about themselves and the Beatles, I was all ears. I've set out to film as many of those stories as I could find, to share them with people who love the Beatles as much as I did. What new information could anyone possibly unearth about the Beatles? Well, one novice filmmaker, he has done just that. He's unearthed a lot of groundbreaking material in the new documentary called Beatles Stories. We're talking right now to Seth Swirsky. He's joining us here on Lunch Break. Hi, Seth. How are you? Good. How are you? Thanks for joining us. Now, you give a great interview to uh, Mark Myers, and the uh, contents of that will be in the Friday Journal tomorrow. But I want to sort of get the sense from you. Now, you're a songwriter yourself. What gave you the idea to go out and try and make a documentary about a topic that's just so many people have already written about and, and, film, and made films about? Well, I have great passion about the Beatles. They were the ones that got me to play the guitar when I was seven years old in the late 60s and become a songwriter myself. And I just love their whole ethic. I love their sound and their style. I still love them to this day. It's so I, I try to actually get closer to them by learning more about them if I could. And before I knew it, when I played the Cavern Club in Liverpool to support my own albums that I make, um, I found that all these people had these great stories. So I figured, you know, I'll get a real video camera. And before I knew it, I was shooting Sir Ben Kingsley and John Voight and Henry Winkler and Lucy Baines Johnson and Art Garfunkel. I mean, it was crazy, but it was incredibly enjoyable. I just have a great passion for the Beatles. And your, your documentary sort of unfolds as this, as this rogue, fast-paced epic. Uh, you know, you interviewed all these people about their memories, but each only lasted a minute and a half. How hard was it to cut back, uh, you know, the tales? Oh, it was very, very hard. But, uh, you know, I always asked every interviewee if they'd give me 10 minutes of their time. And before I knew it, we had shot for two hours. And it was just me and a handheld camera. I mean, I'd never made a movie before. <laughs> but they were so happy to be talking about the Beatles, and I was happy to be listening. So um, I decided to cut each one into about a minute and a half so that I could allow as many stories in for people to enjoy. And that's why there's 52 stories in Beatles stories. And one of the folks you spoke to was Graham Nash of Crosby, Stills & Nash, and we have, uh, we have a clip from that part of the film. Let's take a listen. Uh, about 9.30 on a Sunday morning, the phone rings, which was unusual for my house. And it was McCartney, and Paul said, we're doing this thing over at EMI, would you like to come and be a part of it? We've invited a bunch of our friends, we're going to have an orchestra there and some balloons. It should be a fun time, do you want to come? So I said, absolutely, Paul, I'll be there. We went down to EMI, to the big room there, and witnessed All You Need Is Love being televised. I think it was the very first satellite broadcast that had ever taken place. And a great recollection from him and some other folks. You actually spoke to Art Garfunkel. He recalled the night that he and Lennon discussed their uh, respective Pauls. Tell us about that. Yes, um, you know, it was the piece I called it Your Paul, My Paul. And, uh, you know, John Lennon asked Art Garfunkel for advice. How can I get back with my Paul McCartney? That's an incredible little piece of history. And to me, the Beatles at this point are really in the details of how these things happen. Fascinating to be on Art Garfunkel's roof overlooking the Dakota where John lived and, uh, and to hear these great stories. Did Paul McCartney, did you speak to him for the, for the documentary? I was on a treadmill at my gym and I looked right over to my left and there's Paul McCartney on the treadmill and he gave me a quick look as if to say okay I know you're a Beatles fan you have one <laughs> second to ask me a question and I turned to him I told him about Beatles stories the documentary and I said you know I just interviewed Norman Smith your first engineer and he said oh my god you interviewed Norman Smith he goes you gave me a great gift today what a gift you gave me by mentioning that name and we stayed in touch and I just got an email from Paul telling me how much he enjoyed watching Beatles stories. So that was a great thrill for me, as you can imagine. That's funny, Seth. Although I think Paul McCartney probably looks at everybody and thinks, I think you're a Beatles fan. I know you're a Beatles fan. <laughs> let, let me ask you how you... Is he, doesn't, a, he doesn't allow that many people to ask him questions, though. Good, very, very good point. I give you props for that. Uh, and I also give you props for how you got people to let you in the door. I mean, essentially, as a first-time filmmaker, you would call people, ask them for these interviews. They would say, uh, call me the next time you're in town. But then what would you do? I would say, I'm, an, I'll, uh, I'm going to be in town tomorrow. What a coincidence. And I got right on a plane immediately because 
when you get the interview, you really have to get it. You know, people may forget that you've asked them. Something else might come up. So when our Garfunkel called me on the phone and said, oh, I love this idea. The next time you're in town, six months, a year from now, whenever, I said, you know, I'll be in town, next, I'll be in town tomorrow. And um, I literally was. And there I am knocking on his door and I'm on his roof. And just like everybody else, I mean, it was that enjoyable. I got to spend time with my great heroes and icons growing up, Justin Hayward of the Moody Blues, Davy Jones of the Monkees. I mean, it was amazing. And the Beatles were the thread that ran through it. Seth, you've, uh, you've written songs for Celine Dion, Al Green, Tina Turner. I think uh, you put another huge feather in your cap here doing this movie about the Beatles, your musical cap there. Seth Swarski, thanks so much for being with us. The name of the documentary is Beatles Stories, a Fab Four fan's ultimate road trip. And you can read more about that in the Friday Journal tomorrow by Mark Myers. Thanks for being with us, Seth.